How's it going, Heiss? Dude, I'm not uh, doing I'm not doing an intro today because every time I do an intro, you just end up stealing it. So like you what? know, cop copyright what? protection, what? DMCA. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna about. DMCA no... my intro on your videos. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm yeah. hurt by the fact that Khan knows that I didn't do I, an intro. I, I watched the first 30 seconds of your video, so you know, oh, just to, I see. Okay, just to give so you I that really steal high the intro and put it in later. Well, as there's a that surprise. there's that 30 second statistic on YouTube, right? You got how many people are watching after the first 30 seconds? So I always make sure to watch the first 30 mm -hmm. seconds. At least 30 seconds. Okay, so you're helping out my analytics, but you are taking away your beautiful intro from me, which I don't know. Yeah, you know, know well, 10%, then, that's how so. it goes, right? So anyway. But, but uh, Con, how do we know what game I'm playing? I don't know. I, don't, I have I don't no idea. Know. Maybe I'll just flash I... the text on the screen right now. Maybe I won't. You'll never know. You'll never know it, what I do because... To, it's up to future Con. Yeah, future Con <laughs> will figure it out. And and you won't know because I won't won't tell you until after I publish. So, you know. Right, and I and I tend to publish before you. Because, yeah, I know. So this yeah, says you're like, screwed. Um, absolutely screwed. Ooh. What are we doing today, Heist, by the way? What are we... Uh, doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. No, no, not good. how are uh, you what doing? doing. What oh, are we doing? Sorry, I don't, yeah, I don't care you, how you're it? doing. Does anybody... Does really? Like, that's what we're... In? Does, okay. does anyone care? Probably not. That's no. fine. Yeah. Uh, today, we have lots of iron products. Interesting. And we need to go grab them with the choo choo. And um, it's a 2% grade, 2% climb out of the smelter. And it's a long 2% climb. Yeah, and we've whole, got. The whole thing is 2%. The, did we do any any tonnage math at all? Did you check? Or did we just. We just I, I did do. I did do a, a little quick math before we started. So okay. Montezuma weighs 25,000 pounds, just the engine. The Do you want to stop here so we 8, can fill up, fill up on wood? I'm gonna, I'm gonna huck some that's wood in. Actually, you know, that's actually probably a really good idea. If, uh, if I can stop vaguely near the wood platform now that we've done that. Um, life's hard. Come on, come on. Hey, look, look, close enough. It's fine. That's actually a really quick stop. But, uh, you know, car's unloaded. So Montezuma weighs 25,000 pounds. Tender weighs 8,000 pounds. So total 33,000 pounds. She's got 3,650 pounds attractive effort which means that on our two percent grade she's good for 119,000 pounds that's that's not enough that's not enough so we got eight flats and the flats i want to say are like roughly nine thousand a piece yeah so the empty train is barely is two percent is going to be seventy two thousand. yeah so we're really going to be able to afford you know if we have all these cars like fifty thousand pounds worth of weight yeah and i think and i don't iron remember how much like 18 i want to say eighteen thousand per car loaded maybe the something. raw iron is heavy i remember yeah. and rails are even heavier i think so yeah well rails are 10 per car the raw iron's only three so we're gonna take the yeah. raw iron because obviously you know it's um what what's more bang for the buck i guess right all right you're good to go you got enough wood I want to say the uh, the rails are actually more profit dense per car. Are they? If my memory is serving right, but I don't think we have a full train worth of rails. Not that we could pull it if we did. But, yeah, it's true. Know. It's ten rails per car. That would be eighty rails. I think we had like thirty something iron. I want to say down there, thirty something raw iron, maybe, maybe more. So maybe maybe we just to make it easy, we load it all with raw iron. We bring it up sell it at the freight depot and hopefully we've got enough money for a new choo-choo for next time yeah i mean i have i think like a, a fair amount of money i have uh 1900 still somehow from stuff i honestly don't remember what we've been doing so yeah <laughs> yeah we i mean we've started to run iron and iron ore is not that big but i mean it's like double the wood stuff right because you bring a car of logs down it's like 60 dollars a car you do beams or you do uh the uh, lumber itself, it's seventy-two dollars a car, and cordwood I think is eighty a car or something like that. But the the iron ore is two hundred a car. So um, even just doing only four cars is doing a lot better. Now, I was just loading at uh, the uh, the logs there, right? Yeah. Now most most stations when you load a tender i'm assuming they have a coal chute to load a tender like they don't hand shovel tenders it depends there were a lot Do of you guys have a coal chute you at your shovel. place uh now we have this marvelous thing uh from the late night or late 20th century called the backhoe oh yeah no you just use a backhoe to load a tender that would yeah, make sense we've, we've got a we've just got a caterpillar backhoe and then what you have uh, a big pile of coal that gets dumped off by a dump truck or something and yeah just... yeah that's actually precisely what happens we get about 21 imperial tons of coal ish 
delivered uh, every now and then. And the fun fact is we actually got coal delivered literally today and we, we were almost out. And we have, uh, at the time of recording, we have we had four more nights of Polar Express to finish out. And we were going to be burning the last of everything we had and it was going to get close on the last night if we didn't get coal. So it was a miracle we got coal today. But uh, yeah, we get a, a dump how do you, truck. How that, do you just get coal like you, is there a, there's a company you call there's a mine like what there's a mine yeah there's a mine that a we mine? work with actually and and the hilarious thing is it's the mine that the rio grande worked with so the coal that our engines used to burn is from the hesperus based king coal mine hesperus colorado the railroad used to run there nearby durango and that is the coal that these engines have been burning since they were born and that is the coal that they still burn it's awesome that we still have the historic coal source for the engines, and it's what they like. We've tried a couple other different suppliers in the events like crazy snowstorms that mine has to shut down sometimes, which is actually the reason we almost ran out of coal. But um, we've had to order coal from other places before, and the engines don't like it. They turn their nose up at it. They don't like it. They don't burn that well. It's oily. It plugs the flues. We had a time where... 491, the big K37, which, you know, 10 times the strength of the little Montezuma we have here, has 203 flues and tubes that run from the firebox to the smoke box. And every single one of them got completely plugged by the oily junk in that coal that didn't want to burn. It was really greasy and, like, tacky for some reason. And, yeah, they didn't like it. So we had to clean out every single tube and flube from the, uh, from the firebox end after spending a day steaming up, not being able to get more than 7 PSI, and wondering why with the blower valve wide open, we were hardly getting any smoke out the stack. Is there anything to help? Um, like, I understand, like, once the smoke gets flowing out the stack, it creates a natural suction, which is going to pull more smoke in through the tubes and all that. Is there anything to help that process in the beginning? Or is it just like... You the, know. the blower valve that I was just talking about. So right, but that's the, that's what steam pressure pushing smoke or something like it's, it's steam pressure that's basically just dumping out the stack. It's just a pipe that ends below the stack and it draws a vacuum because the only place that's open is through the fire bed. Right. You go through the t everything else is closed off and sealed off, and so you have to do that. But uh, our engines are equipped with ways to plumb air in, so we can use shop air from an air compressor to run the blower if we need to while we're firing up, which we don't try to do because that makes it run pretty quick and you heat the engine up too fast typically when you do that. Right. Um, so, you know, there's ways to get around that. But beyond that, no, there's not really any way to accelerate unless you have steam. Back in the, the days of early coal loading, though, big locations would have what's called a coal tipple, which is basically like what you see at the coal mine or the iron ore mine in railroads online where there's a chute and you pull the chain and the chute comes down and then it just gravity feeds coal terrifyingly fast and you hope you don't overflow it straight into the tender and there's still there's still a tipple that exists in the rio grande at the uh, cumbres and toltec scenic railroad in chama new mexico still exists still stands they don't use it because it's terrifying and they also have a backhoe so uh it's a lot easier to use you know a couple scoops at a time from a big tractor bucket versus uh you know a, a not necessarily as safe uh, scary piece of equipment to load up the coal but a lot of the smaller locations were hand shoveled there's a great story in little engines big men about a pissed off dude that ran the coal dock and he was in charge of the company's coal and he was apparently a, a huge jerk and he actually killed someone over stealing coal so you know casual railroad stuff back in the day <laughs> it's pretty that's it's kind of savage to be perfectly honest it's like smidge yeah, yeah like you you took coal from my coal pile it was my coal pile yeah i was like, the king of the coal pile uh i i teleported to the smelter by the way just to get the betsy in oh, position okay. I, was, I was looking around my train wondering where you were yeah no proper proper uh smelter here you're gonna come in through the the runoff line drop your cars uh hand them off to betsy to do the shunting into oh, the we're loading. switching we're and switching then, for real yeah and then you can um I'm going to the head, the head shoot, head shunt, head, what's it called? Yes. The head shunt, right? The head shunt or the drill track. Yeah, yeah, drill track. There you go. Anyway, so I'm going there and then uh, you can, you still have to come into the smelter because you're still going to have to hit up that turntable to turn yourself around. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely facing engine. the wrong direction. But Betsy doesn't have to turn around because it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you're, you're switching. You just couple the cars. Well, whatever, also because Betsy's know, a symmetrical, you know. like, you know, 
symmetrical engine. I don't think the turning is really that big a deal, you know what I mean? No, it's not a big deal on a little tank engine like that. There were some neat comments on a recent episode talking about the angled cylinders on my uh, my channel, where folks were actually talking about that typically being done for clearance of wayside objects in the early days when the loading gauge was really, really short uh, and, and not wide, which is um, loading gauge being the fancy term that we use on the railroad for uh, what will the train hit if we try to run the train through this area kind of thing? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, it was interesting because, yeah. it, you know, for me, it was just one of those things where it's like the math. Yeah, it's like the math technically doesn't really do much in terms of force. It just changes, you know, point of maximum when force. it happens. Yeah, but it's not really it doesn't really change the overall force. I mean, at the end of the day, the force on a train wheel is sinusoidal. Uh, yes. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to follow. And actually, I had a thought about that, too. The pistons on a train, right? Yes. Can move independently because they're controlled with the same set of valve gear, but they could theoretically move independently. However, the axles are fixed. So yeah. the wheels are like the two arms on either side. Are they always in perfect sync or do they fall out of sync? Like they'd have they to can, be. They can never fall out of sync because the axle. Because the I mean, axle's fixed. Pressed like, on, there's keys. Um, right. Your piston stroke and piston movement and valve gear movement is not set by the steam it's set by the boundary conditions of the wheel sets right going through all the all the the gear and stuff yeah so if you were to yeah. like twist an axle somehow in some godforsaken manner uh yes then you could have problems like that but that's not really a thing um the only time i've ever heard of that being vaguely a problem and it's not it wasn't like a twisted axle or anything but it was um if a locomotive had a connecting rod fail or something fail where they had to take one connecting rod off for some reason. Right. Then they could end up having a distribution in force one way or another, and they could twist something or break something and lock the engine up. It's interesting. Hey, look, Betsy just spawned back in. <laughs> oh, you keep getting Betsy not spawned? It's so weird, I man. had that same problem. Betsy was invisible, and then you jumped in and started moving, and then she went, poof. Hello, I'm Betsy. All right, well, you can uh, follow me in. Betsy's going to do all the hard work here. We need another 060 here. We really do. Um, 060 is a beast. Betsy is, she's uh, chugging along here. We're just going to, we're going to pull a, you know, set in her. Oh, that's right. This is, this is break at 100%. Wow, Betsy, you are actually a beast. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, she's one break. 30%, so 30% pushing through a full break. Like not and even, dunk. Didn't, didn't even I'm care. Helping. I helped. All right, okay. we're going to. Yeah, I'm just gonna speed up Betsy a little bit. Sorry, I'm I'm just going to do the whole thirty cars pushing back full throttle. No one's driving the train, Delio. Good, good. I'm glad. That's that uh, seems to be a good theme these yeah, days. Yeah, and then I'm gonna run right in the gauge um, with my shoelaces <laughs> is it untied. For your duty, I don't think it is. Yeah, well, my shoelaces are untied. I gotta bring this switch, or else you're going on to the main line. And I hear there's a there's a school trip coming with like you oh, know, no. a couple of. Look at this plot armor. Look yeah. at the danger. Look at Not the, yeah. a train load of kids. <laughs> uh, we got to push this all the way to the right, actually, into the iron loading area. Yeah, it's our first iron products out the smelter. This is going to be yeah, cool. Yeah, this is very exciting. Uh, and then you have to go to the left after the train. So I'll catch Betsy going through here. Okay. And then, um, and then you have the to go to the left. And go, and go for a spin. Yeah, yeah you got to spin. And then you can actually... Uh, no, and then I got to push all the way back out. Uh, yeah, because I gotta push the cars out in front yeah, of you. Yeah, you gotta get out ahead of me, so... I don't know if Betsy... So Betsy's gotta pull all eight of these on flat ground, is what's gotta happen. Yeah, she could probably Fully loaded. It's, yeah, it's I mean, it's flat. It's, it's flat. It's fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. I, I promise Betsy can probably do that. Just right. not, uh, just not quickly. You could even go, uh, fix up the uh, Montezuma there in the engine shed while you're, while you're at it. And I just, could. I could just, park uh, the shed, get the repairs. That needs to be a thing so bad where you have to repair engines, like just a natural wear over time, and you have to put them in an engine shed every so often just, just to get them. Just to make it actually, you know, rotate through equipment and stuff. Yeah. Right. Or have a purpose that was, for um, engine sheds. That was implemented in the, the precursor game, American Railroads. And so we know that QMA knows how to do it. It's probably just kind of low hanging fruit or, you know, yeah, it's low not a high priority. List. Yeah. You know what? This lane has enough space, I think. Because it curves all the way back to that stopper. Oh, I, do you think you can shove back and fill all eight I think I can shove all eight and, and do all eight at once. <laughs> well, you're out of my render distance, so I'll take your word for it. I think I have more than enough room to shove back further than all eight. I could probably do, like, 14 cars, maybe? On the raw nice. iron? Maybe 14? I'm using the uh, the physics glitch 
or it's not a physics glitch, but the visual glitch that everyone's been telling me to do anytime they, we use a turntable in the save. You can what? stand on the turntable. And oh yeah, and just spin it. Yeah, and just spin it without having to move your camera and walk. Yeah, around. it's kind of nice. It's a lot more efficient and uh, easy on the back too. If you nice. do it on the side with the track too, where the track's gonna line up, it's really easy to tell when you're in the right spot. Yeah, I gotta, gotta go do that. Yeah. There we go. You spinning That's the Zuma? Uh, this is a top tier gaming move, I think. Okay, so hold on. If you're spinning the Zuma, then you have to wait until I go out first again. Yes. And then follow me out and then hook up to the back of this and drag it. All right. Looks like they're 9,000 pounds a piece. Yeah, almost 10, 9,800, 9,850. So you got to figure maybe 20,000 per car-ish. So she should be good for maybe six of them, but not eight. Well, yeah. So what's the what's the plan here? Do we Do we just, if you can't make it, we just use Betsy to shove it up? Like just... We could do that. That could be interesting. Betsy, Betsy can honestly just stay similar, where she is now on the back of the train. Similar attractive effort. Yeah, stick it on the back and, and then just be ready. You know, right, I'd like to good. see how far. I'd like to see how far Montezuma can get just for the fun. But yeah, yeah, no, you know, we, have can, Betsy we can do Betsy standby. on the back and then push the rest. I don't think we're worried about Betsy trying to split a flat car in half with uh, all no. of its tremendous amount of power. So it's either that or we got to go all the way to the helper station and pick up the uh, class forty eight, which. A going there is no longer a problem, but bringing the engine back is. <laughs> well, yeah. The nice thing is, though, you can warp there, grab the engine, bring it, do the task, bring the engine back, and then warp back to wherever. And like, so it's, it's kind true. of it is nice in it's that true. sense. Someone, I had a bunch of people's comments where they were saying the, the they feel like the warp is overpowered, and I'm like, I get it. Like, I understand because, you know, someone said you could have a warp at every switch you have, for example, and it's like whenever you need a switch, you just warp there and you know do your switch and then warp back to your you know wait for your train to show up and then jump on board and keep going or whatever right and it's like i get that but at the same point in time people were using mods already to do that in the first place so yeah it's not like it's you only really extended lets you do that yeah you know if you don't want to use the warp on your server then just don't i mean it's that's that's how i would yeah. kind of look at it anyway we're we good to go all right go betsy go um my thing about it is like it might make sense to either charge for it to place the house, make it a, a paid structure, right? So that you know, that, you know, even if it's like a hundred bucks, it limits how much you can spam it, right? Without making it so unattainable, or maybe make it priced by distance to the next house or distance from the freight or depot. price per use, or price per use, because um, you uh, could make I it a hundred also... bucks to use the teleporter, and then it's like, well. Do I, I really was also use hoping it? that it was going to be a set up telegraph lines too, as like a detail object. And so you'd have to run telegraph lines along your railroad to connect the houses so that the next time, oh, okay, you know, like, okay, I can place the house, but I have to do this extra task and kind of run the, the industry and area as it was originally before I get the reward of doing this. this right. Way, so I'm going to hop out and uh, give you Betsy. Oh, you, oh you've, got, you've already got the Montezuma. Never mind. I guess I'll just be the, the helper then. No, that's fine. We could swap. I'm just, I just, no, I don't, I don't I care. I saw you were driving, so I just decided to, oh, I can't that, actually do good. this because if I, never mind. Got to stop. Got to stop. Got to stop. What are you, are you, are if you I accidentally hit there? the switch trigger point before you're off the switch, Ooh, it's going to yeah, flick it and then we're going to derail. So I just had to wait. Look at you and your non P and cup senses tingling. I know, right? I was, it was the, yeah, that was the, the warning sensation. <laughs> so this is how yeah. this industry, if we were, if this was a legitimate industry, this is how we would legitimate, like this is how they would do this to actually get the transport train back in front of everything and pulling it out. Like they would just. Well, I mean, it depends on the exact setup. Like, I guess my question was... is, have you seen a setup like this before in real life or something similar? Like the closest. I have, I have. And it, it just depends on if it was the railroad that switched out the industry or if it was the industry that switched out the industry. Like a lot of industries have their own engines or they have their own car movers that are not like locomotives, but they're almost like forklifts on rails and kinds of things like that that can move the cars around. And they have those so that they can switch things out and they don't have to wait on a train crew and a crew collar and all this stuff to make things happen. But either way, they leave them at one kind of uniform location where you've got an outbound track, inbound track, something like this, 
so that you could do the handoff. Or you hand off between the switch engine and then the road engine. Am I am I going up? Yeah, to Zoom is yours, bro. Oh, okay. I will... oh, okay. We we did. Oh, okay. you're unconnected was... here at the back. Perfect. I think I left I Zuma's yep. reg on, so we're under a little bit of compression. You might have to flick that switch ahead of you too, it's the fine. transport switch. Forgot about it. It's fine. I'm gonna just put. Um, you know, it's eight cars fully loaded, so uh, I'm gonna put Montezuma in full power, uh, notch eight, full power, everything. And I'm going to run and grab the switch and uh, wait for the five years for Montezuma to get to Yeah, me. I was supposed to say, you have no risk like of this going wrong <laughs> anywhere. I, I don't think I can set Betsy's reg low enough to stay below. Oh, 8%. That's your acceleration. It's like 8%. 8% on Betsy. If I stay okay. at 8%, well, I mean, it doesn't seem to go too fast. Maybe maybe 11% now. You're picking up speed. That's thing. We are picking up speed. And all right, now I'm on the Zuma again. And we're back out onto the main. Got eight loads in tow. And a well, be, just this behind. would be good if it works. I mean, it's all our iron, really. So, yeah, it should it's be kind a of fair exciting. Bit of money. I feel like um, if you ever watch Top Gear or the Grand Tour, which that's not a motive individual that you are, I would imagine you've probably seen. Yeah, I, I've seen. I've seen a fair amount of it. Yeah. When they uh, when they do the specials where they're on road trips and stuff, and then they've got the backup car that's like some sad car that stalks them. That's a joke. And then they hope they don't wreck, so they don't have to be in it. Yep. Um, you're you're that vibe right now. I yeah, just don't want to end up with the. I'm Betsy. like more powerful than the main car. I feel you know, but, like but, uh, I mean, it, I mean, not literally more powerful, but you know, power power to weight and uh, yeah. yeah. yeah so, you're actually pulling away from me now, though. I better go up to like thirty percent reg. Twenty five. That sounds like a good number. That uh, that's yeah, that's probably about right. Oh, I don't have any firewood. LOL. Okay, well, that's... Well, uh, uh, you don't need it. It's fine. Who needs... Who, I have 22 firewood left at this, and I have no wood, so that's good. Good thing I built that, <laughs> that fuel depot at the smelter to, you know, stock up Betsy with fuel. Well, worst case, uh, when I stall, you can just... I can steal fuel mine, from you. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, that's oh good. yeah, I'm already slowing down. Yeah, you're not going to make... I'm gaining on you now. That's good. I'm yep. just going to let Betsy push into you and then steal wood from your tender and run it back up and down the train while while this that's happens. probably the smartest move for yeah. the uh, longevity of this. All right, I'm at 50% now. I am pushed in. I'm at 100% now. Full reverse. Send it. We're speed... Er, I can't tell if we're speeding up. We're maintaining speed, I think. I think that's good enough, though. Yeah, just How's hold it, it at, at, at a walk of 12 mile an hour. Don't, don't mind me. I'm hey, just going to... Hey, are gonna you borrow. taking my wood? Uh, yeah. Well, you got you, got, you got that good wood. Go you know what I'm saying? Own. So I'm gonna... <laughs> just, we just loaded this thing up. Go get your own. Uh, well, mine's down there. I'm not going to make it back out of the trade. Don't worry. I'll be back in a second here. I'm just going <laughs> to gonna throw all this down here. Perfect. It's like I'm not even moving when I jump the other way, you know? The train's, like, slower than walking speed. Right. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. How's it going? Oh, do, do, this good. must have do, happened a few times where, like, they have multiple engines. One of them runs and out of coal. They had to steal fuel from one. And they one. steal fuel. Like, there's no way that hasn't happened before. That has to have happened. I haven't heard stories, but I'm sure that it's happened. I'm sure and, uh, someone was just like, uh-oh, we're out. <laughs> like, fun, fun fact for me. Well, actually, we did steal fuel from 20 for 491. But we weren't running. We knew that 20 wasn't going to run, and she was parked, so we shoveled her tender out and shoveled it into 491s recently in the great the uh, great coal shortage. But um, fun fact that uh, about me, the one recurring nightmare I have is running out of coal. I kid you not. I have had that nightmare so many times where it's like, I'm not at the museum. I'm at some railroad where we're running the engine super hard, and it's like I look back in the tender, and there's no coal, but there's just like random other junk in there like piles of pipes and wood and parts and other thing. And it's just like, we need it. Throw it all in the fire. Ah! <laughs> I've had that nightmare at least like tens of times, dozens of times. I had it last week even. It's one of those weird recurring brain things. It's like, what are you worried about? Running out of coal. <laughs> if you have an oil burner, right? Yeah. Your tender is full of water, and then they have an oil tank in the tender as well. Yeah, separate oil got... tank. Yep. And how do they pump the oil? Um, it depends. Usually, they didn't have. Usually... Did they use electric pumps back in that day, or was it just no? Like... So I mean, it's it's primarily gravity fed rather right. than actual pressure fed, but you have to have the right fuel consistency for that. And back in these days, the oil burners burnt 
what is called Bunker C, which is a really fancy way to say this is almost grease. And so they had to have tank heaters plumbed in from the boiler actually to heat the tender tank so that the oil would flow because it wouldn't flow at room temp. And, and then, then and once then what it would just it would, it would go down a pipe. line into uh into the burner and the burner's low enough that it would yeah the, the burner's lower than the bottom of the tender tank there's no pump involved hmm. interesting even if you have like no oil in the tank just a very little amount of oil you have enough gravity head to move that uh, pressure so all right well i think i've stolen enough wood here You'll, you'll keep Betsy stocked up for now. And uh, we're not quite as bad off as we were, but uh, getting kind of close. We still got some wood on the deck. So. Well, it's all you. Well, if you don't still, make uh, it, uh, let me know. Did you Did you just you just stop? Yeah, are you Are you really? slow? Con, con, are you're you leaving. slowing down too much? I've still got like 100 yards to go. Are you going to make it? I think I'm gonna make it. I think, I think you're gonna make is it. Is slowing down. You're. I feel like I. I thought you had enough momentum there. You just make that, and then I'm, I'm gonna. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. But Betsy's our only hard. smelter engine right now. She's this, gotta go. This train's heavy. You don't have anything to switch out. Why'd you leave? No, she's gotta go back to the smelter. I want to, you know, Come speed on. up. The I thought we were friends. Are you? Are you? Why did you leave? You're leaving me to die on this hill. Did you make it? Are you gonna die? I'm almost making it. I'm slowing. I'm very slow. I can see the track leveling off. Oh god, this is gonna be close. I'm gonna put it in reverse. <laughs> I'm gonna come back. Up. <laughs> you, you might wanna, you might, you might wanna protect it. The engine's just about off the grade. Yeah, but that's not gonna be enough. I'm sighting Your it. Your load first on the person. grade is still gonna cause you the problem. Yeah, I need to get all the cars off the grade. Yeah, I'm coming. I, I thought it was close enough. It was not. It's so no, no it, it might work. I'm coming. It's so close, Con. I'm coming. That's so funny. It's so close. We need a bigger I road stopped. engine. I, I've got a couple cars off the hill. We need a much bigger road engine. We do. Yeah. We need something that's... I think that's... I'm speeding up. I think I've made it. If, if you make me come all the way back here just to see you made go, it... Go I back to the smelter now. Go back no, to, I don't need they... you. Go back to the smelter. No, Betsy's coming all the way back no, with us. No, no. Yeah. No, you're the smelter engine. You're no, the we'll, bring her, we'll bring her back engine. next go time. Back we'll, to just, the we'll tow her down. We'll, we'll bring her down as a tow. Yeah, too late. Too late. You ruined it, Heist. You ruined it. It was going to well, be flawless. It was going to be smooth. L last episode, we were going on YouTube dates, and this episode, we sound like a married couple. Well, you, you, the problem is you were worried. You were too worried about running out of coal there, and I don't I even know why. This is even a coal burner. I don't have any coal, Con. I ran you're out running of coal. It. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm so concerned about running out of coal, and then you forgot that like maybe Con did all the math in his head without any of us knowing. Apparently, and including you just, you just had it figured out. My subconscious I can't tell if you're you chasing me or not because uh, you're, you're out of render distance. No, I'm so. chasing you, but I have little bitty drivers, so I'm not going to go very quick. <laughs> little, little, itty bitty wheels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that. We're going to have to tow Betsy that, back uh, down. That, that was well, well played, sir. That was very well timed. <laughs> I can't believe that you made it, to be honest, but anyway. Wow. I'll take it. Now I'll the track's just empty. No idea where Heist is. Nothing. Just, just uh, you know, do the thing. Do you, uh, do you end up going the wrong way or something? No, I'm coming. Get lost. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just cruising along. Twenty-five percent reg because it, it doesn't make a difference if I go a hundred or twenty. <laughs> yeah. Speed's it's the same. Just, uh, that's how that works. It's fine. Well, in real life, if you're not pulling load, how would that work? Is it like reverse? If you have your Johnson bar at hundred percent forward, let's say. Okay. Right, and you put your reg at 100% versus 20%. Is it a faster piston speed, or is it just you're gonna be doing a burnout? <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> you're, you're gonna, gonna slip put down super hard, yeah, because it's too much power. Yeah, it's too much power. As soon as you overcome the friction and the weight of the load behind you, which if you have no load, it's very low. Yeah, you're you're doing a burnout. But and if your reverser's me, at like if your Johnson bar is at 100%, no matter what your reverser's at, assuming you're not sliding, you're gonna get the same max speed out of it. Like if you have five yeah, percent with yeah. no load, and you will ultimately the throttle is how fast you're sending steam, what the flow rate of steam to the steam chest is, and then the Johnson bar is setting how long that steam is being admitted to the piston itself. Right. So if your Johnson bar is all the way forward, you know 100%. You're actually admitting steam for 85% of the stroke. That's where 85% comes in. Because you have to start cushioning the piston on the backside, or you have to cut the steam supply off at some point in order to make sure you're exhausting and not interfering 
with the next stroke. It's not like a, a car where you can have something right before top dead center, right? It, does it, it so, strokes in both directions regardless if you're going forward or backwards, or is it only correct. one direction? Yeah, you, you have both directions out of both pistons. It's all just the different time. timing. Yeah, just one side versus the other. So 85% of the time, if the bar is all the way forward, 85% of the time, the piston's under power. And so if you have enough throttle to saturate the piston with boiler pressure, that's that. Like, the, you have moments at the museum or when, when we're running where you'll have the throttle partway open and you'll have the bar decently hooked up, but you'll go for more throttle and then the lever is really easy to move because the pressure is equalized and balanced and you can't get any more because you're already saturating the steam chest with boiler pressure. And so we always say, oh yeah, it hands you the throttle because you just try and pull the bar, you know, pull the throttle bar back and nothing happens. And you're just, you're limited by the Johnson bar. How was that, not, um, yeah. how was that stopping working out for you? Uh, poorly. Yeah. I need to sell that stuff, by the way. Yep. Because I have the majority stopped. of the Muna. You do. Muni. You are the money holder. Yes. Mr. Moneybags. I am very rich with my $1,900. Hey man, that was a lot of money back in the day. Well, good news is we brought Betsy up, so uh, you know. Good, good, uh, <laughs> well, hey, uh, there you are. Look at that. Our smelter. You could have teleported. You didn't have to take an engine. I'm not sure why you're here. Well, I had to take the engine because someone had to push you up, and uh, uh, not the whole way. You could have like left and gone back down the hill once we got most of the way up. You know, it would oh have been more yeah, no, true, way. true. I could have done that. Yeah, Imagine yeah. I had done that, and then the other guy didn't call me on the radio, all like panicked, like, "Hey man, I'm gonna not make it," you know, and I'm gonna run out of coal. And <laughs> I'm not sure what you're on about. See, I have nightmares sounds, about uh... like normal things, like failing exams, because like that's you know. <laughs> You know, that's that's the thing that you have as engineers. That's, that's yeah. normal things. Like just, oh, you know, I'm going to fail this exam I have tomorrow because I haven't studied for it. And it's like, wait, no, I'm not running, university running out of anymore. Coal. That's, that's the nightmare. That's the real engineer's nightmare. Running that only made Come us on. 400 bucks. Are you kidding me? 1900 to 2350. 450 are you, bucks. Are you serious? Is for raw six, iron that cheap? For six cars of raw iron. Man, maybe is that, it's is that, uh, There's no way that's right. Is that right? Room. 2350. The, press the button again. Yeah, if 20, you press 25, button... it's 25 dollars per raw iron piece. Oh, so it's 75 dollars a car, so it's marginally better than the lumber. And yeah, marginally better than lumber, even though it takes oh us all the way to the iron. God. So we have we have 2500 dollars exactly. And the Glenbrook well, costs. If we want to get a Glenbrook in our next video. Thirty-one hundred dollars. We gotta run one more train, basically. We're gonna. I guess we're gonna run some more choo-choos. Yeah, we're gonna go run another train. <laughs> we'll just. Yep. We'll just. We'll just go do that mad quick, and then. Well, hey, uh, the banter was fun. The trains were fun. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and I'm, I can't believe that we actually made that up. Uh, and you cut off like at the perfect time. I, you had like maybe five seconds earlier, you could have done it, and it still wouldn't have stalled. Maybe, but it was close. That was cool. So you need to you need to trust trust the master, young Padawan, and and trust that I under no I it was a complete blind glass. That was really lucky. Um, <laughs> but hey, you know we're gonna say we're gonna go uh, run another couple trains of like lumber or something. I don't know, whatever. We'll run something, get enough money we'll by the Glenbrook, and, uh, and next time we'll show it off. It's gonna be yeah. Fun. Next time we'll go run run some run some cordwood, I guess, because we need more cordwood at the smelter. Always, always. cordwood. Always, it's, literally it's, always cordwood. That's yeah, the secret. Cord cordwood's a problem. But yeah, let us know what you guys think yep. in the comments down below. Make sure you check out Heist's channel. Link in the description. And uh, like, subscribe. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.